Hi, this is Graham from Genoms Astro. I bought this telescope, Celestron Evolution 8, a few months ago, and in this video I'm going to give you feedback now that I've used it enough times to get a good opinion of it. So in this video I want to cover the portability of the scope, the Wi-Fi, the alignment, the battery life, the noise, the finder scope, and also the optical tube assembly and the optics themselves. If you think those things could be of interest to you, then please click the subscribe button if you haven't already to subscribe to Genoms Astro and let's get started. So how portable is a Celestron Evolution 8? Well for me, uh, I came to this scope having used a, a 10 inch Dobsonian for a while and whilst I really like the aperture, I found it a little bit unwieldy, ended up using a trolley to get that scope in and out of my uh, garage and that worked well and I really liked the fact that there were no wires, it was simple observing but I was still looking for something that maybe I could move more easily and that gave me tracking. So enter the Celestron Evolution 8. It's obviously a, wi a wireless uh, model. You don't need to take any wires with you uh, when you go outside. I looked online for all the weights and then it was very difficult to compare what that actually would feel like compared to moving, for example, my HEQ5 mount in and out of the house. So really what I'd say is um, it's all about the weight distribution. So this scope comes with some really good handles on the mount and here on the side of the fork and there you go i can pick this up carry it in and out of the house taking a bit of care obviously in one piece and i can leave it set up like this weight wise the whole thing 42 pounds 19 kilos if you separate out for example the tripod that's that's 14 pounds so that's six and a half kilos just under if you keep the optical tube attached to the the mount and just remove it from the tripod with three screws then that part is 28 pounds so basically 28 14 42 pounds 19 kilos for the whole thing so i think this is very portable obviously you could need to break down the tube from the mount if you want to put it into into your car certainly easier to put it into the the packaging that came with the scope that way but for me it is definitely something i can carry out and i'm not a particularly strong guy it's all about the distribution you can get this close to your body it's got good handles it doesn't feel like you're straining yourself carrying this sort of weight so evolution 8 a portable scope so the next thing is wi-fi you take the scope outside you click on the power sets up its own wi-fi network and you connect to this using your phone in the same way that you connect to any other Wi-Fi network. Now, this scope's been around since 2014, and if you look online, then Wi-Fi connectivity is one of the big bugbears that people have had, people have experienced problems uh, with Wi-Fi dropout. But what I say, so far, touch wood, this scope, um, the connectivity has been excellent. You can see the network on your phone, select it, Celestron um, network, and it stays connected you can move around within certainly within a few feet walking around the scope at night if you've still got the phone your phone in your pocket or your tablet in your pocket i've been using an iphone uh, but i haven't read anything particularly bad about using androids but i can't speak for that but the wi-fi for me uh, connectivity is good and obviously the benefit of that is you're not carrying around a hand controller although this scope comes with a hand controller it's still in its box inside no wires nice and easy so so far wi-fi connectivity and setup very straightforward so what's the next thing you do when you've uh, got your scope connected to wi-fi well you really want to align it unless you want to just scan around uh, manually so the scope comes with various alignment modes the default one is sky align in which scenario you point the telescope to three stars you don't need to know their names and you do an initial rough alignment until you get the star into the optical, into the, uh, the finder scope, the red dot finder, and then you do a finer align so that the star is centered in the eyepiece. You do that three times, and then your tablet, your phone, gives you an alignment status. So it's very much like using a hand controller, tells you if the alignment is successful or failed. What I would say is I've had some difficulty with sky align. Often, even if I've leveled the tripod carefully and really centered the three stars, um, I still get a, and alignment failed so that's a little bit of a mystery to me sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't what i've found is that i prefer to use the the manual align option and the difference here is uh, you can 
move it to a star that you can identify. So for example, a bright star, if you've got some knowledge of the, of, of the uh, night sky, which you possibly have with this, so it's not generally a beginner scope. So you could choose to point it at Arcturus, select that on the, on the, on the app, center it in the same way, and then go to some other bright stars that you know. Send three of them again, I think it uses two out of the three to actually do the alignment. But generally I've found that manual alignment is more reliable. And you can also, there's a very neat feature that once you've got the basic alignment going and you start to use go to, so you go to your first object. So let's say you've aligned on Arcturus and Vega and um, maybe a star in Ursa Major. You've got all that working. Then you, you decide to have a look at the, at the Ring Nebula. And once you've centered it, you can then choose to add that as an additional alignment point. So you can, you can get up to 10 alignment points by just adding the objects that you're you're doing go to uh, to look at. So for me, manual align has been much more straightforward than Skyalign. But obviously, you've got those options exist on the on the app, and there are probably some people that prefer depending on what sort of sky visibility, what obstacles, whether you're in a back garden, you can see the horizon. Maybe Skyalign works better for more people than it does for me, where I've got a relatively restricted view of of the night sky. I can see up but I can't see the horizon. But manual line works for me. Battery life, well, because it's Wi-Fi, the idea of this mount is that everything is within, everything you need for a night's observing is integrated into the mount. So there is a lithium battery inside this mount and you can charge it using the mains adapter that comes with the scope. You just plug it in and during the charging, you see this uh, logo light oscillating very slowly and eventually after a, whatever period of time when the battery's fully charged it's a stable light. What have I found so far? Well I haven't used it in, in, in cold weather but I found absolutely no problem using it for a few hours without any issue. I've understood it's supposed to be able to last sort of nine or ten hours and give you a good night's observing. So so far at least battery life not a problem at all. Um, some users who will have had the scope for a longer time and maybe use it in, in, in harsher temperatures during the winter, then perhaps it drops off a bit, but so far, so good. So what about noise? Is this a scope that you could call neighbor friendly? So if you use your scope in your back garden, then you may be concerned for the amount of noise that it makes as you slew around the sky go to in onto uh, targets. So for me, what I've discovered is that if I run this mount at the full rate, the, the maximum speed, then I find it a little bit too noisy uh, at night time. So trying to give you an, uh, an idea of that, if I run the motors, so going down and then up in elevation. So certainly that is quite noisy. And then side to side is a little bit quieter. So one of the good features, if you look at the, the Sky Portal app and, uh, and other apps that you can use, then you can adjust the maximum slew rate. And that's what I tend to do. Uh, I tell the scope that I don't want it to, to slew around at maximum speed. I bring it down from a number four, which is maximum on the, on, on the Portal app down to around two. And yeah, it takes a bit longer to move between targets, but I'm really not concerned about the noise that it makes. And obviously, depending on your situation, if you've got a really large back garden or you're out somewhere in the field and there's no one around, you don't care about that, you can use the full speed. But for me, it's a good feature to be able to, to slow down the mount and then maybe it will last a bit longer. I don't know, I think the idea of this is that it's got good quality gears. You're paying certainly a lot of money for the mount element of this. so. But it isn't, it isn't particularly quiet when running on full speed, but not a big deal. So what's next? Well, what about the red dot finder? Now, these things are very divisive. If you look on the forums, a lot of people just put them straight in the bin, consider them to be a piece of junk. And yeah, it is a plastic, pretty cheap example of a red dot finder that comes standard with this scope. You might think, well, they saved a bit of cash there. I came from this from using my DOB regularly and it had a nice 8 by 50 right angle finder and I thought well I'm going to probably swap that one out pretty soon when I get the Evo running but I found I don't need to. For me personally as long as you've done what you need to do with any red dot finder that is to say you align it and keep it aligned uh, with the optical tube axis then 
the red dot finder is perfectly sufficient. You only use it to get the initial uh, alignment stars into the field of view of a low power eyepiece. So this scope comes with 40 millimeter Plossel eyepiece and this is perfectly sufficient to, to allow you to get the star in that field of view. After which you go to the second stage of alignment, the motors run a bit slower and you center it and bang, you've done an alignment. So for me, yeah, I would have liked it perhaps to come with a metal bodied red dot finder, but it's nitpicking really. Uh, it works for me. I can adjust it fairly easily in the normal way to point uh, during to point to the to the, the same axis of the scope itself and perfectly good enough no need for an upgrade certainly on day one so what about the optics no scope is any good unless the optics are good now this is standard evolution 8 it's not the edge model which in the UK is another um, seven or eight hundred pounds on top of the price of the basic optical tube but you may have seen a video on my channel uh, pointing out the problems I had with the first delivery, I had some scratches on the corrector, some blemishes for certainly not a perfect scope. That one went back. This one looked like new when I, when I got it. Optically, is it any good? So the first few nights when I was getting used to the scope, um, I was mainly concentrating on using the app to get all the alignment stuff going. A bit of hit and miss there with the manual align skyline. Um, after that, I concentrated on how good the alignment was. Now, it was a little bit off. The collimation was a little bit off. This scope, you have to adjust it. It comes with the standard uh, screwdriver kind of method. So always a bit um, stressful to do that, but did a tweak at high power, got the collimation spot on, and so far, touch wood, it is held collimation. So what are the views like? Well, I'd say they're really very good. I've used this scope quite a bit so far on globulars, double stars, some high magnification stuff, just really to test out its resolution. I've been doing it, that in conjunction with using my new Bard Morpheus. There's a video on my channel for that eyepiece, and I would say that it's a really, really nice combination. Uh, the quality is very good. I'd say for most observers, it's going to be absolutely all that you need. If you want to look at... Um, well, certainly if you look at something like the Ring Nebula, I've looked at for probably through, I don't know, 20 or 30 different types of scopes over the years. This was a really nice view, really good contrast, um, nice resolution of the stars, and certainly it will split tight doubles, uh, Epsilon IRA, eyes are, you're down there at two or three arc seconds, absolutely no problem at all once it's collimated. So I haven't used it on the planets yet, we'll come back to that on another day, but so far I'd say it, the optical tube assembly quality is good. Yeah, it comes with one and a quarter inch visual back. It's possibly something that's not far down the upgrade list, but absolutely good to go when you get it out of the box. So, summary for me after uh, quite a lot of time with this scope, I'd say it is a really nice package and it certainly delivers what I hoped it would. It's got a lot of nice features for observing. It has got these big chunky handles. It's got a nice eyepiece tray that you can use and easily find. It has a little light that illuminates it that you can adjust the brightness of. More places in the, on the tripod spread a bar to store eyepieces as well. Really nice features. Doesn't have anything that you don't need. As I say, it hasn't cluttered the, the assembly with a big finder. You don't need anything extra to this. It's got nice, big, large diameter, easy to spot, color coded, uh, quite smart. Uh, wheels so you can tighten down the axis if you want to manually move around and everything really everything just works yeah it's not the easiest thing to first locate the the mount on top of the tripod perhaps if you've separated the two things but you know with a bit of practice that's pretty straightforward and it's just three screws that most of us are familiar with for attaching the scope so really it is an evolution certainly not revolution but it gives you the features you actually want getting rid of the wires having the wi-fi being able to carry it, yeah, you're paying quite a lot of money for this package, but I would say so far it is, uh, it is delivering. I'm really looking forward to using this scope and making some more videos to show you, uh, maybe photographing some of the objects I can see to give you a better idea of, uh, of what it actually is like to use it. So I hope it's been useful. Definitely a thumbs up for me for this scope. If you haven't subscribed yet to Gen Genoms Astro, please hit the subscribe button now and you'll be notified of future videos from my channel. And otherwise, well, thanks for watching.